In this video, I will show you how you can install a free, almost perfect Windows 11 clone on a USB drive. It's called Windows FX 11. It looks almost exactly like Windows 11 and that's the goal of this Linux distribution. It should also run Windows applications out of the box. And if you look at the screenshots, this is very impressive. It would definitely trick me in thinking that this is Windows. They also have a desktop that looks exactly like Windows 10. As you can see, really impressive stuff. Let's install a full version of Windows FX on a persistent USB drive and let's give it a ride. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find everything about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short, agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps so you can skip any part of this video. In previous videos I showed you how to install Ubuntu, Manjaro, Pop! OS, Linux Mint, Kali Linux and DevOS and even Chrome OS on a persistent USB drive. So if you for instance want to know how to run Chrome OS from a USB drive then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Windows FX actually offers a free edition and a professional edition. With the free edition you will get access to all the professional features for the first 30 days, which includes among others Android apps and gaming support, voice assistant, Microsoft Active Directory and OneDrive in the file manager. And if you want to support the project then you can purchase the professional edition. In this video we will go with the free edition, so scroll down and let's download this one. Download latest version, no wait for the download. Download complete, here it is. As in the previous Linux installation videos, we will need to flash this one on a USB drive. This one is only the installation ISO, the live environment. So we will need two USB drives. This one will be flashed on the first USB drive and then we will use this one to install the full Windows FX on a second USB drive. The first USB drive for the live environment can be any off the shelf stick, but the second one where we will install the full Windows FX on it should be a more faster one, the read write speed should be decent, otherwise the whole system will be very slow and not even a good machine will help you if the USB drive is slow. So get a decent USB drive. So with that said, let's flash this one on the first USB drive, the off the shelf stick, and therefore we will use a tool called Rufus. So this is Rufus, the official website. I use this tool in every Linux installation video so far. So I will just quickly go through this, scroll down, click on the download link, download complete. This is it. Now plug in the first USB drive. I will do it as well. It has auto detected my USB drive. Now click on select, find the downloaded ISO. Here it is, open and just start. ISO image mode is okay. We want to format it anyway, so everything that is currently on the USB drive will be deleted. If you have something important on there, make a backup first. I will just continue. Again the warning that everything will be deleted, we know that. And now let's wait. Finished, we can close this one. We flashed the live environment onto the first USB drive and now we need to boot into it. I will assume that you know how to boot from a USB drive. First you restart your system, then you press one of the function keys, it's usually F11 or F12, it depends on your PC manufacturer. Then you will get the boot menu and inside select your USB drive and it should boot into it. I will do the same on my machine as well and I'll see you in a moment. Here we are in the live environment and if I wouldn't know, I would say this is Windows. We want to install this one on the second USB drive. So plug in the second USB drive. I will do this as well. And let's go to install. I will just go with the defaults. American English is okay. Region is okay. Keyboard as well. Now this is the important part. Here you need to select the USB drive that you just plugged in. Click on the drop down. In my case it's this one. And select manual partitioning and next. Now we will delete everything that's on the USB drive. So if you have anything important on there, make a backup first. I don't have anything important on there. So I will go to new partition table, GUID partition table, then click on free space, click on create. The first one will be the boot partition. And here we want to have 500 megabytes. File system should be FAT32 and mount point should be boot EFI. And we want the boot flag. That's it, okay. Again, click on free space, create. This one should occupy all the rest of the space. File system x4 is okay. Mount point should be root and the flag should be root as well. And okay, let's go next. Here you will need to add your user and a strong password and install. This cannot take half an hour or so. It depends on your USB drive speed. Just be patient. Installation finished, all done. And now we can restart and boot into the full Windows FX installation. I will do the same on my machine as well and I'll see you in a moment. 
And here we are, the full Windows FX Linux distribution. This is now running from the USB drive and everything you change here will be saved to the drive. So let's check it out. I will first open the start menu. It looks like Windows. The search is working as well. But if you look at closer, then you will see that some apps are not Windows but Linux apps. Like for instance, the file explorer is Dolphin. Instead of Outlook, you have Kmail. But the cool thing is you have PowerShell, the good old Windows PowerShell, which is awesome if you ask me. Yeah, Bash is better, I know. What else do we have? Let's see the system settings. They really nailed that one. So this looks absolutely like Windows. The cards here and the menu on the left. Let's try customization. All right, you even have a dark theme. So let's try that out. Looks awesome if you ask me. Then if you click on one of those cards, and this is where Windows ends and Linux starts, because here you can also see all of the Linux icons, Breeze and Gnome. And then down here you have also your Windows 11 icons. And I really hope they have permissions to use those icons together with all the Windows 11 graphics here. Or at least I hope they redrew everything. Alright, let's close that. The settings as well. What else do we have? If I go to power off. They really paid attention to detail. This looks like Windows to me. What if I tried to lock the screen? Even the lock screen looks like Windows. Well, I think I found a bug. This one doesn't work. But let's just switch the user. Now let's check out the file browser, which is Dolphin as you can see. They tried to make this one look as the Windows Explorer, but you quickly see that this is not the real thing, although it looks similar. But the good thing is, since this is Dolphin, you can have multiple tabs, each showing a different folder. For some reason Microsoft still struggles with the tabs, and Linux has them basically since always. And also you have your preview panel, which shows the file information, like that. And another cool thing is you also have your terminal here, which also opens in the current folder and also navigates to the next folder if you switch the tab or change the folder inside the tab. So this is very useful and I love it. Still a way to go Microsoft. Let's close that. Now regarding Office, you have Microsoft Word, but this is just the online version. For offline editing you have only Office. And this is not a bad choice if you ask me, because it is compatible with all the Microsoft Office formats and it even saves those by default. But if you don't want to use only Office, you can also install LibreOffice if you want. Now regarding the software, you don't have a Microsoft Store but the Linux FX Software Center where you can find all your Linux software and install it, like LibreOffice and here you can see it uses Flatpak. And one thing that I really like here is the Linux FX Device Manager which really looks like the Windows Device Manager with all the system information and I would really love to see something like this on all Linux distributions because you just have everything in one interface. So I'm absolutely a fan of this one. Really cool stuff. This distribution is also able to run Windows applications so you should be able to also play games on this one with Wine running in the background. Now of course with Wine is a hit or miss, maybe it will work, maybe it will not. So let's try to download the Windows only application and run it. Let's try Microsoft Paint. This looks like Microsoft Paint. All right, let's try it out. Let's unzip that. As you can see, it is an EXE. So let's run it. The first time you try to run an EXE, it will try to configure Vine and it will ask you to install some stuff, but I will just cancel all of those. Now it looks like nothing happens. It just crashes. Maybe we can fix that quickly. Let's try to run this one in the terminal. Then we will see the error. Here we can see this one DLL is missing. This should be easy to fix. If you get an error like this that some DLL is missing, then open Wine Tricks. Wine Tricks. You can just ignore the errors. Here I will go with the default prefix and I want to install Windows DLL. And now just find that one. Here it is, MFC42. That's exactly this one. So let's check it and OK. Now the installation wizard should start. Just follow the wizard and install the package. I did that off screen and the package is installed. So now that we have the package, run this one. And look at that, here is paint. Is it working? It looks like it is. Definitely working. So that's how you can run Windows programs. Let's close that. Another thing that you have on Windows 11 are the widgets. And you have them here as well. But the cool thing about those here is that you can move those to your desktop. Let's say I want sticky notes. Let's move it here. Give it a bit of time to initialize. And now here you can write your notes and this will stay here. Let's try another one. Maybe the calculator. And let's resize it. 20 times 6 equals 120. 
so you can have your widgets on the desktop, which Linux also supports out of the box. Let's remove those. Now the last thing I wanted to show you is the Android support. We want to refresh the image list. So with this one you will actually get Prime OS, which is basically Android for desktop devices. And this image will be running in the virtual machine. With this you will also get the Google Play Store. You will be able to download Android apps and also play Android games on it. As said, this will be running in a virtual machine. And this one should also run on Windows if you use it in a virtual machine. If you want, you can try out this yourself. But for this video I will skip it. And that's all for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, if you like my content, if you think it's helpful, then please give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. It means a lot to me, it makes the channel grow. So thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.